iPhone 13 on us for every customer, current, new, everyone, to show the love. The video looks phenomenal. See, this difference between Black Star Network and Black-owned media and something like CNN. You can't be Black-owned media and be skate. It's time to be smart. Bring your eyeballs home. You dig? Today is Monday, June 27, 2022. Roland Martin Unfiltered, broadcasting live from New Orleans. We are preparing for the Essence Festival. Coming up on the Black Star Network, a video released of a white cop who attacked uh, a, uh, a black man in a fatal shooting. We'll actually show you that uh, video. Also, since the Supreme Court overturned Roe v. Wade, uh, making abortion e first up, up to the states to make it illegal or legal. Uh, many people have been talking about the implications of this, how people are affected. Uh, and also, uh, people are talking about uh, a congresswoman, Mary Miller, who said at a Trump rally, thanking him uh, for calling a, this a victory for white life. Mm. We'll talk about this, y'all with the first elected female mayor of Mount Vernon, New York, uh, who uh, will share uh, her devastating story of losing her daughter at six and a half months and explain why the battleground for reproductive rights is so critical. Also, the January 6th committee has a surprise hearing on tomorrow. They say recently uncovered evidence calls for this hearing. Mm, what does this mean for Donald Trump and his minions? Also, President, jo President Joe Biden has signed into law uh, the first major gun bill in more than 30 years. Plus, a Russian judge has set a trial date for WNBA star Brittany Griner. And in our Fit Live Win segment, a biomedical field service engineer turns to farming in Baltimore, Maryland. Yeah, folks, farming. It's time to bring the funk. I'm Roland Martin Unfiltered on the Black Star Network. Let's go. He's got it. Whatever the miss, he's on it. Whatever it is, he's got the scoop, the fact, the fine. And when it breaks, he's right on time. And it's rolling. All right, folks, glad to have you here. We are on the ground in New Orleans, uh, where Essence Festival of Culture is taking place, presented by Coca-Cola. Uh, we're going to be here broadcasting all week. Looking forward to it. Uh, of course, of the sights and sounds as Essence Fest returns after a two-year hiatus due to COVID. And so... Uh, it's uh, we have stories all this week, and of course, look for our specialized coverage taking place uh, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday uh, from New Orleans. Let's talk about the big story that people are still talking about for the uh, Roe v. Wade being overturned by the U.S. Supreme Court. What it has done is caused a lot of conversation, not just about abortion in this country, but also the health of the mother. Instances uh, where women have had no choice but to abort a baby. Uh, thus, they die. The problem with uh, the bills that are being passed by many Republican legislators across the country is that they have absolutely no exceptions whatsoever. You don't have exceptions for race, rape. You don't have exceptions for incest. You don't have exceptions for ep ep toxic pregnancies. So it's just like 
uh, just unbelievable when you begin to talk about this here. Uh, the various medical groups have all uh, criticized this decision uh, because they have removed, frankly, the choice out of the hands of medical professionals. Then you have uh, many of these states like South Dakota saying that they're going to prosecute, yes, prosecute doctors who perform abortions. Some states are looking at actually prosecuting individuals who are even trying to go out of state who desire to have an abortion, which you also now see are district attorneys who have decided, especially in blue cities or blue states, that they are not going to prosecute folks. In fact, the governor of Wisconsin was trying to figure out a way around the fact that Wisconsin in the 1800s outlawed abortion. Well, because you had the federal law that superseded that particular state law. He has decided, Tony Evers, he's decided that what he will do is grant clemency to any individual who makes that choice. And so uh, this rolling back, this striking down of Roe Ro Ro v. Wade after nearly 50 years of precedent as law of the land uh, has a number, a number of implications. My next guest understand this very dearly. She is uh, the first female elected mayor of Mount Vernon, New York, uh, Sean Patterson Howard, also is vice president of the African-American Mayor's Association. Uh, she almost died when she lost her daughter at six and a half months. Uh, she joins me now. Uh, glad to have you uh, on, on the show. Uh, uh, Sean, I'm sorry, I said Sean, sorry, it's Sean. So um, this is a thing that is interesting as we begin to analyze uh, this decision is that there are so many cases like yours and others where you have these exceptions where things happened and yet you don't have these states offering guidance uh, when the life of the mother is in danger. So explain what happened uh, in your case. So in my case, I was 27 years old, a healthy woman, married. This would have been my second daughter. I had an issue with an incompetent cervix, and um, the, the placenta became exposed, and I de developed an internal infection, one that would have taken my life if I would have continued with the pregnancy. And so I literally had to make the decision with my family, instead of going through Herculean efforts, to induce labor and deliver a baby. Um, and this was almost 30 years ago at a time where her lungs were not developed enough and she wouldn't live. And so I did that. It, it took me about 12 hours to deliver. Um, she came out very, you know, barely breathing. My mother held her and took care of her, but I was then on the hospital table fighting for my life as I began to bleed out. And you could hear the blood hitting the floor and I could feel myself slipping away. And all I could do was pray um, because we did not have the right medical professionals in the room to deal with that type of complication. And so I never had an opportunity to hold my daughter. My husband didn't get a chance to see her, but at least she was in my mother's arms. Now, here I am, educated, married, um, middle class or strong working class on my way to middle class. And oftentimes women of color are not heard we're not heard, we're not listened to when we're talking about complications and challenges with our bodies. And so thus, we see a higher infant mortality rate with women of color. Uh, even women of color who have master's degrees lose their life and lose their babies at a higher rate than white women without a GED. So, uh... As I, as I listen to you explain that story, I, I've, I've said, seen so many other stories uh, of women uh, talking about uh, the issues that they face uh, and that as a result of this decision, uh, doctors are literally left with no options whatsoever. And these doctors uh, now face the possibility where they could be prosecuted if they made a decision uh, to save the life of the mother, because again, you don't you don't have any exceptions uh, for most of these laws. Absolutely, and it shouldn't even get to a place where we're talking about exceptions to a law. It shouldn't come to a place where it is just a question over the life or death of the mother. A woman has the right to choose. It has been the precedent. It has been the law of the land for almost 50 years. And of your um, growing and, and your prosperous countries around the world, the United States is the only one that is taking this right away. Now, I'm going to be very transparent. Um, that was not my only experience. 
at the age of 16, and then again as a freshman in college, I made the decision um, to have an abortion. That was the right decision for me. I was not of age. I didn't have the money or the education. I would not be sitting in this seat right now, I believe, if I would have taken the route to have the, my baby. And at 16 years old, I had an incredible mother. Um, and she's still alive, so I still have an incredible mother. But at that age, I just couldn't go to talk to her about what I was going through. And so my boyfriend and I at that time made the decision and we got on the bus and we paid for it ourselves and went to Planned Parenthood and made that decision. And I made that decision again as a freshman at Howard University. Um, so it's not just in life or death situations. Black women right now are being paid 58 cents on the dollar to that of a white man. And white women are paid 73%, 73 cents on the dollar to that of a white man. So it's also a question about economics. It's a question about the path that you choose for your life. We need to be able to make decisions about our bodies. And we cannot have men and definitely the Supreme Court dictating to us when, where, and how we have children. Uh, it is. Um, but here's the deal, though, people are dealing with. I mean, frankly, uh, Democrats and liberals um, believe this was the law of the land. They could have codified this uh, in the, in, into law. They didn't. And so as a result, when you leave it up to the courts, they could either rescind a decision, overrule it like they did here, or they could, or they could allow it to stand. Uh, do you, as an elected official, do you think this has also uh, caused um, uh, Democrats uh, to now realize, uh, you know what, uh, you simply can't just expect the courts will stay the same? Uh, this is where Democrats should have ensured that this became law. Absolutely. As Democrats, we have to be stronger, we have to be clearer about what our focus is, and we have to lean into that with the codification of policies. And so here in the great state of New York, our governor, Kathy Hochul, along with our Senate and our assembly, did codify abortion and, and abortion access into the laws of the state of New York, understanding that this ruling was coming down. Unfortunately, it's not something that was done on a federal level. And we know there are other states that are doing this now, codifying it into law. But we also know that there are 26 states that are in the process of putting it into law, and they have trigger laws for when this federal decision came down. And so we have to be braver, we have to be bolder and unapologetic as Democrats and stand on our values. We cannot continue to try and pull so many people under our tent that our message, our focus, and our direction becomes lost. And that's one of the things that I feel that we have not done well. All right, then. Uh, look, Mayor, we certainly appreciate you sharing your story with us. Uh, thank you so very much, uh, Sean Patterson Howard. Thank you so much. Take care. And we're going to continue to All fight. Right. Please, thank Olivia, you very much. Continue to fight. All right, then. I appreciate it. Thanks a lot. I'm going to bring in my panel right now uh, to talk further about this uh, and some other issues. Uh, so, uh, please, uh, welcome to the show, uh, Dr. Julia Malvo. She is the chair of the Department of, Af excuse me, College of Eth Dean of College of Ethnic Studies, California State University, L.A., Dr. Makongo Dabinga, professorial lecturer, School of International Service, America University, Dr. Larry J. Walker, assistant professor, University of Central Florida. And so, uh, since we, I guess, I guess since we have, uh, uh, you know, our, our legal Wednesday, uh, I guess we'll call this um, a University Monday uh, with all three of you, of course, uh, with various universities. Julian, uh, I'll, I'll start with you. Uh, it has been it has been um, interesting the last 72 hours listening uh, to the feedback and, and watching as people have described different scenarios that they now have to deal with uh, when it comes to pregnancies, when it comes to saving the life of uh, the mother, uh, when it comes to these decision making things that people have not thought about. I, and I even uh, it, it's been very interesting also looking at folks who are now been analyzing uh, these a lot of these red states where they have they, they have poor health care for young kids and others, and now uh, their policies are being put on the line. You know, Roland, it's very interesting that these people want to have, they believe in the right to life until the child is born. 
at which point they don't believe in any rights at all. That's why the child, uh, well, uh, child tax credit was rescinded. That's why we see so many, so much poverty and child poverty okay. in particular. These people are, um, you know, are the better side of lunacy is the best way that I can put it in the cleanest language that I can put it in. What we really need to look at, as the sister who just spoke uh, talked about her own experience, there are lots of experiences like that. Should you be forced to carry a child that you were impregnated because you were raped? Do you, are you forced to carry a child when you, the child is a product of incest? That makes no sense at all. Uh, but, you know, what we see is voting has consequences. That's all I have to say. I tell this story all the time, but people get mad when I tell it about a little girl, young lady, who uh, was a Bennett Bell, actually, and she couldn't vote for Hillary in 2016 because she said she didn't like Hillary. Um, she said she wasn't going to vote for Trump. She just was going to stay home. Two years later, when Gorsuch was appointed, she called me and she said, Doc, what are we going to do about our abortion rights? I said, I don't have abortion rights. I'm over 60. I said, well, you should have thought about that. You couldn't vote for Hillary. All these people who want to stay home because they've got some hard line litmus tests need to understand that voting has consequences. And one of the consequences is this Supreme Court, each one of them perjured themselves when they testified under oath that they believe that Roe was precedent. Each one of them perjured themselves. But guess what? They are the Supreme Court. The only way we get around them is through court expansion. And I hope that President Biden is thinking about that again before he said he wasn't in favor of it. But what are you in favor of? I mean, this decision is ridiculous. And as the sister said, you know, black women earn less than 60 cents on the dollar for a white man. Not only that, but we are more likely to get abortions. And right now, if you look at some states, and look at how far people have to travel. People spend a grand just trying to get from point A to point B, not to mention the hours that they have to spend. If you're going from Mississippi to, let's say, Illinois, maybe the closest state where you can get an abortion. So we have to look at those things. There are economic consequences here that we're not paying attention to. The, the point, Larry, that, that I made there when I talked about uh, these so-called pro-lifers, uh, I've been ripping many of them over the weekend, and I said, y'all ain't pro-life. You're anti-abortion. I said, you can't be against Medicaid expansion, but you're pro-life. You can't be so in love with guns, but you don't really care about gun violence, but you love life. Um, uh, when it comes to infant mortality rates, uh, when it comes to prenatal care, when it comes to voting against school lunches, uh, you can't tell me that you are pro-life when your only concern is the fetus, but not when it's a six-year-old who can't eat. Yeah, I mean, it's, Roland, you hit on some highlights, some really important points, and this is a racial justice issue when we talk about the Supreme Court decision from last week. And I think that there are a few important things you, you kind of you alluded to in terms of infant mortality rate. As, as it relates to that particular issue, black infants are three times more likely to die if they have a white physician compared to have a black physician. So we really, like I said, we really care about the lives of, of children, particularly black infants, then we would do something to address this issue. And like I said, this is a, a racial justice issue. The other thing I want to talk about, Roland, is this fight between pro-choice and pro-life. And like I said, the Supreme Court decision from last week, one of the topics I don't hear people talking about as it relates to which group will be impacted by this is women who are in the U.S. Armed Services who are stationed in red states. Now, imagine the challenges they're going to encounter. Dr. Malvo talked about, you know, the cost that comes to traveling. But if you're in the U.S. Armed Services, like I said, you live in your, you know, station in a red state, what are some of the options you have in terms of getting permission, you know, to leave, to travel to another state and make your own personal decision? And what we may see is, not only in terms of, you know, criminalizing, as we've seen some recent reports, not only criminalizing um, physicians, but also criminalizing women. The other thing about that is we know that this will fall squarely in the backs on black and brown women, particularly black women. We know that the black community is historically uh, criminalized based on the research we see. And we know that these red states will purposely go after black women who are trying to make a decision. They travel um, over state lines to, you know, make decisions what's best for their family. So I think this is important. Like I said, once again, this is a racial justice issue. And this idea, once again, that, you know, you the importance of life. When black people encounter so many, we have so many health-related challenges, that uh, there correlates to lower life expectancy. But you don't hear a conversation about that. And you talk about the expansion of Medicaid, et cetera. It is really not about 
in making sure people live long, healthy lives. It's about the controlling women's reproductive rights. And it's also when we talk about Congressman Perry, um, I'm Simi Miller, the comment she made this past weekend about who we want to really protect. Um, Congo, um, look, there are now going to be real life implications. Uh, you have right now um, stores limiting, uh, pharmacies limiting people who can buy um, um, the day after pill, if you will, because they are uh, stocking up on them they are to be able to share them with friends and others. Uh, and so, you know, now, now we are seeing. Uh, the after effects of this, you look at the polling data, uh, you know, Democrats have picked up, you went from four to five points, but by this decision, but the, the thing that we still have to deal with is there are going to be women who have serious medical issues. They're trying to actually carry a child and the decision by the doctors may need to be, um, look, do you deliver this, uh, do you try to deliver this baby or do you risk the life of the mother? Those are real. And look, it, it, it's going to be an issue and what the Supreme Court has now done is complicate that issue because they pretty much said, hey, states, it's up to you to decide what you want to do. Yeah, absolutely. And it's really tragic. And, you know, a lot of doctors are going to have to really decide, am I really going to focus on the, on the oath that I've taken to, to do no harm at the end of the day? And there are going to be a lot of decisions. Some are going to make the decision to stick with their oath. And some are going to say, hey, I don't want to go to jail. And at the end of the day, there are real women right now who are suffering because of this. And we can talk about everything we need to do towards November, and I'm with that all day, every day. I'm, I'm online talking about it, and I'm part of it with the money and put it to organizations and the like. But like you said, Roland, right now, there are real-time consequences being made. There were women who had appointments on Saturday. Who, who, or whenever this was passed, who were in abortion offices and had to leave after traveling across different state lines to get to where they are. What's supposed to happen with them? And the fact of the matter is, we are having policy for women and other people in different laws that are being passed that are being at, advanced by states that have the poorest records on taking care of people. 14 of the states that have these trigger laws are the last, are ranked last 14 as, a, you know, 46 through 50 as it relates to taking care of women and children. And now they're putting out policies that are going to affect the entire country. So all of these Republican governors and senators and, and po other politicians and religious, so-called religious, quote unquote, right people, because we know they're wrong, who are saying, well, no, we're going to make sure that this is provided. You haven't been doing it this entire time. It's like the late George Carlin said, if you're preschool, if you're preborn, you're fine. If you're preschool, you're effed at the end of the day. And this is what we are seeing. And so we have to make sure that we are putting our money and our organization and our support towards those organizations that are on the ground, that are helping women get across states, that are helping women get funds in, uh, in terms of being able to move around. I applaud organize. We talk about corporate sponsorship all of the time. I applaud organizations like Dick's Sporting Goods and, and, and Starbucks that said, and other organizations that said they're going to be supporting women. But we all know here that many other women who are going to be most most affected don't have jobs that have insurance and access, and they are going to be left. We are in a country that doesn't talk about the poor, and this is a bill that's going to, this is a, a, a ruling that is going to fundamentally uh, uh, affect the poor and is doing it in real time. So we have to make sure that we're doing real time things right now to support people in every way, shape, and form because real lives are on the line, and we can't lose sight of that. And I'm glad that you brought this up because, we, you know, we, we haven't lost sight of it here, but we have to make sure, particularly as it relates to black and brown women, that they're not lost as well. Folks, hold tight one second. When we come back, I want to talk about uh, the wake-up call that white folks, white progressives, and white Democrats have received as a result of this decision. I'll unpack that thing when we come back on Roland Martin Unfiltered right here on the Black Star Network. Ryzen just gave us all a brand new iPhone 13. We've been customers for years. We got iPhone 13s too. Switched two minutes ago, literally right before this. iPhone 13 on us on any unlimited plan for every customer. With plans starting at just $35. All on the network more people rely on. I looked up to Spike Lee. 
cost. We didn't. I mean, he's a, he's a he's a genius. But then also, I was this 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 kid from Brooklyn right. that felt like you know. Give me my damn respect. I, you know, I, I I made this you know this creative art right that people are responding to, and it would have been great if we had the opportunity to sit one on one. Hold on a second. Okay. Spike. What's up, babe? So I'm in LA right now. I got a one on one series with my network, Black Star Network, and I'm interviewing Maddie Rich. I appreciate that, bro. That that was. That's a big moment, man. That was like, uh, man, that was good. Got me all choked up. That's good. Well, I'm all about connecting. Appreciate that. Love our new Alexa. It's a Buick. Yeah, Alexa. Buick. Alexa. It's a Buick. It's an Alexa. It's a Buick. It's an Alexa. Coach, that's a Buick. That's an Alexa. The Buick Enclave with available Alexa built in. We're all impacted by the culture, whether we know it or not. From politics to music and entertainment, it's a huge part of our lives. And we're going to talk about it every day right here on The Culture with me, Faraji Muhammad, only on the Black Star Network. How about sushi? I just had sushi for lunch yesterday. How about tacos? Automatic emergency braking, one of six advanced safety features standard on every 2022 Chevy Equinox. Find new technology, find new roads, Chevrolet. I'm Angie Stone. Hi, I'm Teresa Griffin. Oh, Roland. <laughs> hey, Roland, I am so disappointed that you are not here, first of all. Um, where's our dance? It's like we get a dance in every time I see you. And so now you're not here for me to dance with, sir. You and your ascot, I need it. I need that in my life right now. Okay, um, I love you, Roland. What's up, I'm Lance Gross, and you're watching Roland Martin Unfiltered. So, uh, welcome back to Roland Martin Unfiltered, right here on the Black Star Network. So, um... It was quite interesting um, looking at um, the, the protest over the weekend, um, watching the reaction from people all across this country. And it, it, was, it was striking to me. It was striking to me because I, I saw individuals... Um, angry and upset, gathering in mass numbers. A and I was watching this. I said, where were y'all when we were talking about the For the People Act and the John Lewis Act? Where were y'all when we were talking about the George Floyd Justice Act? And the thing that w w was striking to me is that this is a perfect example of how conservatives and Republicans had this very clear, defined focus on packing the courts, getting rid of Ro Roe v. Wade, where you had Democrats and progressives who were thinking very isolationist in terms of this is my issue, so climate change is my issue, or, or um, uh, 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 Roe v. Wade is my issue, without realizing that all of these dots are interconnected when it comes to a democracy. And so now folks are talking about, we've got to mobilize, we've got to organize. Well, where y'all been? See, this is the difference between black people and everybody else. We 
can't afford to leave the battlefield. We, we can't afford to travel around the world and we can't afford to do those things because the reality is we're not fully free. And now others are now seeing how the Supreme, Court's make, Supreme Court makes their decision and the state legislators are reaffirming that decision and now passing more onerous laws. And now they're talking about using the power of district attorneys to prosecute people. And so now people are going, oh, my goodness. I mean, so federal and state and not local. Yes, which we, we've been trying to tell. We tried to tell you. Hashtag we tried to tell you. And so maybe white Democrats and progressives when we're talking about democracy and we're talking about the power of the people, y'all might want to pay attention to black people. And so now LGBT people, oh my God, what's going to happen? Uh, Clarence Thomas has already made a signal. Hey, let's revisit same-sex marriage decision. Oh, don't think for a second Republicans are not planning that. And so now gay folks all of a sudden are concerned. Where was your concern when we were talking about the Florida People Act and John Lewis Act? That to me, Larry, is a lesson that people are going to have to understand when you are fighting, you cannot afford to leave the battlefield and go play. Mm. Because you're in a war. So, Roland, for black folks, this has been 401 years in terms of us you know, being on the battlefield. And as you as you as you said, we, we we know we can't leave. That this is a consistent fight, and it never ends. And you're right. You know, like you, I've watched the coverage over the last couple of days and in, in these and these protests. But like you, where was that energy? Like you said, when you know we were fighting with you know with the, you know hoping the Senate would pass some kind of comprehensive police reform or election reform, and it didn't happen, and, and it was essentially dead on arrival. Well, you know, it's too late for folks now to say they want to mobilize. The train has left the station. So we have a radical Supreme Court, individuals with lifetime appointments. And so, like you, you know, talked about earlier, the, the really only option we have is, is ex, ex, you, know, ex, you know, adding more seats uh, to the Supreme Court. Unfortunately, we just saw today um, President Biden was at the G7 meeting some today and yesterday has made it clear that he doesn't support that. So essentially what happens is, you know, for black folks, once again, we're 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 an army of one in terms of fighting for the rights of all Americans. And I, it's hope I'm hoping, Roland, that what happened last week and also you were alluded to the other issues that the Supreme Court undoubtedly will take up and try to eliminate is that folks realize that you have to constantly be engaged, and this also relates to the Democratic Party in terms of their how they mar market and strategize when it comes to certain specific issues in terms of various subgroups. But it's a really important, once again, that we're all engaged all the time. And black folks, once again, shouldn't be have to constantly be in the front of the, of the group taking all the shrapnel on behalf of everyone else in America. Because as that saying, when they become for you, come for, come for me, they will eventually come for you. And now that time has happened. The bell is rung. And now we are face serious challenges. But it's time for Democrats to mobilize and to be pro progressive and stop playing scared. This Omakongo is chess. And... Yes. You have to move the pieces on the board. You must anticipate various things. And, and I'm telling you, when, when, when I, 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 and I was there, I was out there, we were covering these things, live streaming these things, you know, and, and other than the Poor People's Campaign march that took place, uh, which was multi, which was multiracial, uh, multi-ethnic, look, it was black folks out there fighting. And now all of a sudden, you, now all of a sudden <clears throat> you see this plethora of white women uh, now hitting the streets. And, and again, I, I'm glad to see there are people who are awakened. Mm -hmm. We told y'all this was going down. 
He told y'all what was going to happen. And now it's real. So now what you going to do? I'm a Congo. That's that's real talk. You know, the Republicans have always had the mentality of we're going to fall in line. And Democrats have always had the policy of we're going to fall in love and always getting caught up in feelings. Yeah, Dr. Malvo talked about her former student who didn't want to support Hillary Clinton. I, I saw people saying, I don't want to vote for Hillary because I don't like how she did Obama when they were running against each other, even though Obama clearly made her secretary of state. Look, really, at the end of the day, we see this all the time. I remember back in 2021 or something, people were doing these surveys talking about, oh, there's not that much support for Black Lives Matter. There's Black Lives Matter fatigue. There's diversity fatigue and all of this other type of stuff. We as black people have always known that when they come for any other group, it's always a matter of time before they come for us, period, bottom line. And at some point, we have to start, they have to start listening to black people. These Republicans have been organizing for this day since Roe v. Wade was passed. Marches every, uh, rallies every year here in D.C. They have like 20 people in like 19... So, uh, 81, and then like 100 people in, in 87, they never stop. They are, they are and they're organizing for the next thing, whatever. And now, as you said, they're going to be coming after interracial marriage. Even though Clarence Thomas didn't say it, we know that they're coming for that. That was interesting, <laughs> uh, Uncle Clarence. <laughs> we know. Kind of left something out there in your uh, little side brief there. But anywho... You know, they're coming for for gay marriage as well. We already know that Texas House GOP put in some, you know, they, they want to get rid of the Voting Rights Act. The list goes on and on and on. There's one Republican in some state who's trying to introduce some type of law to have adults be able to marry children. They are never going to stop until we stop them. Period. Bottom line. And as we see this coverage start to go all across the country, Roland, we're already seeing it. People are putting white faces forward. And it's almost like, you know, the, the, the feminist marches of the, of the 70s and the 80s and stuff where, and before that, where black women who were already talking about these things were told to go to the back of the line. We can't do that now. We have to have all hands on deck. You know, my oldest daughter is going to be voting for her first time in the 2024 election. And when I look at how we let her down, how we let my other 13-year-old daughter down, how we let my, my, my son down with this type of work in terms of us getting too comfortable, this is why Dr. King said that, you know, progressives on many levels or, or liberals on many levels are, are a bigger problem than the evils that we're fighting in terms of the, the racist policies and ideologies. And so white folks who have been sitting on the couch, this is the time to get off the couch, but stay off the couch. This is a never-ending battle. Any right that you have won can be lost, can be taken away from you. And if you paid more attention to us during these times when we've been talking, we wouldn't be where we are right now. But right now, we are where we are. Get in line together with us. Don't try to overstep, try to shut people down. Because really, at the end of the day, if we don't realize we're all in this together now, we never will. And that's the thing that, Julian, when you begin to talk about, again, these battles that are, are taking place, um, you know, people are going to have to understand it is all hands on deck. Absolutely. I mean, it's really ironic when you look at the women who've come out because of the Roe decision, the women who've come out... You know, the majority of white women voted for the man who appointed these judges to take away our rights. And so yep. now they're mad. They should have been mad in 16 and, but, and not voted for the white supremacists. They should have been mad. You know, they should be mad at local elections. And so I, you know, Oma Congo very well said about just all hands on deck, all of us have to work. This is, this is not a dress rehearsal. This mess is real. I mean, it is very real. And, you know, to see young women have uh, fewer rights than my generation had. That's, that's chilling and it's frightening. And the economic consequences of this are great, not only in terms of what it will cost to go to get an abortion, but what it will cost if you... The Post had a piece over the weekend of a young 18-year-old woman who just missed the cutoff of her... She didn't know she was pregnant, so she just missed the cutoff to have an abortion. Instead, she has twins. Uh, she's 18 years old, her boyfriend is flaky, but he's 18, so he's flaky. He he said he'd rather be skateboarding than uh, taking care of his kids, which he's 18. Um, but this woman is now tied to these children for the next 18 years, uh, whether the boyfriend comes through or not. And what does that mean in terms of her own income-producing ability with two children? 
And we're, we're not thinking about what the impact that this has on women's economic situation, the jobs that they can hold, all of that. I appreciate what the brother said, um, Larry said, about the um, women in the military and the difficulty they, many of them will have. Biden can do more, but we can do more, too. We have allowed folks, essentially, to take our rights away. We've allowed it because anybody who does not vote, and Roland, you and I are on the same page with this, I mean, anybody who doesn't vote, quite frankly, needs to be beat. Um, well, I, I, let's not go that far, but maybe. I mean, why? How, how do you put your life decisions in somebody else's hands? So all those women who voted for the 45th president, how you like it now? How you like it now? And that, that's all I have to say. I mean, we did this to ourselves. We not, we on this, on, on Roland Martin Unfiltered, but we Americans set ourselves up for this mess. And really, the only answer in terms of this court is going to be expanding the size of the Supreme Court, which many, including the president, have been very reluctant to do. And of course, folks, um, at a uh, Trump rally, a Illinois congresswoman, let's just say she sort of made clear how she and others <laughs> view Roe v. Wade decision by the Supreme Court. President Trump, on behalf of all the MAGA patriots in America, I want to thank you for the historic victory for white life in the Supreme Court yesterday. All right. Some of y'all may have missed that. Run it back. President Trump, on behalf of all the MAGA patriots in America, I want to thank you for the historic victory for white life in the Supreme Court yesterday. Well, Congresswoman Mayor Miller goes, oh, that was, that was a mix-up of words. I did not mean to say that. No, that was... Did nobody correct her? Audience applauded. So did Trump. I'm just saying, what do you make of that, Omicongo? Look, if I'm at like a Biden rally or something, and, and I'm listening to Biden and he's energizing me, and he says, and, and we're going to make sure that we kill all black people, and I I'm not going to start applauding. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, you know, it's like, what? In, you, there's a moment, you know, that when keeping it real goes wrong type thing, Dave Chappelle, where you're like, wait, wait, what did he just say? But the fact that all of those people applauded and she mm -hmm. led them in the applause on top of that, it shows what she was really thinking. This is a woman who has also quoted Hitler in the past. And everything comes out at these rallies. And I know you're in the media. We do this work you're in front of people. We, can, we all make slips. When you make slips, you correct yourself. When you make slips, you try to move on quickly. When you make slips, you don't try to invite the audience to applaud with you. And so really, at the end of the day, we got to understand if there were ever dog whistles, they are all gone. They've been gone for about four years. We need to, and we need to just call it out and call them out for who they are. And we need to also just check our language in general. Like, stop calling these guys the the the, the right because they're wrong. Start calling these, stop calling these guys pro life because they ain't right. We use their language and let them control the narrative. But really, at the end of the day, we need to take that. It needs to be packaged. It needs to be recycled. It needs because look, Democrats got a little momentum right now, but. Leave it to the Democrats to mess up a good thing, right? Because the DNC ain't doing anything. So they need to take this, and this needs to be on loop every single way that they go. Because like you said, she didn't apologize. People just said it was a little slip of the tongue. But that slip of the tongue, when you're standing in front of a racist, an admitted racist who had a racist presidency, what more do we need to get out there to get organized and fundraise and vote these people out of office. They've given us every single thing they could possibly do to show us who they are. When Dr. Maya Angelou said, when they show you who they are, believe them the first time. I believe you. <laughs> um, quite an uh, interesting choice of words there, Julianne. You know, and then they said, I, I went on their website, they said she meant to say the right to life. No, she said what she meant. 
Uh, these are the same people who've been running around talking about this replacement theory. These are the people who talk about there being too many black people. This is up the absurd. But it was, as, as Oba Congo says, this was not a slip of the tongue. Not when she did put her hands up and led the audience into clapping. What it was was what she really believed. She what they want to say white lives. And in fact, when we look at this, what the, the it seems to me that the agenda is to starve black children to death, but to preserve white children. Starve our children to death? How? The poverty rates. Um, the women who would be asking for abortions are mostly poor women. And quite frankly, wealthy women can get whatever kind of health care they want if they can pay for it. But the, the women who depend on Planned Parenthood, Planned Parenthood offices are closing. Although some are doing interesting things like moving to a contiguous state from a state that's outlawed, abor outlaw outlawed abortion so that they can uh, serve the people in that particular state. So that's a good thing. People are going to have to be extremely creative. But it's just not a creative. We also have to be clear and real. There is a war on black people. That woman said it. She wants to save white lives. What about black children, lady? What about us? She's not thinking about black children. She's not thinking about brown children. She's thinking about white children and white lives. And we should be very clear about that. Uh, and look, I mean, when you look at those, um, you look at what many have been saying is that uh, this, frankly, is something that people should be anticipating, Larry, in terms of this whole view. I keep saying this is white fear, angry with the demographic changes and saying, oh, white folks are not having as many kids as they should be. Yeah, Rob, I know it's something you're going to talk about in your book, upcoming book, right? So Dr. Marvel hit on an important point in terms of what was said, the comment, alleged slip up, wink, wink, uh, this past weekend. But in reality, what, what, she, what you heard is what she believes. And you certainly, like I said, you, and my colleagues have highlighted, you didn't see anyone in the background looking around confused about what was said. <laughs> and you certainly didn't see former President Trump pause or correct her when he went to the microphone. And so it's really important we make this connection between the comments that were made, the shifting demographics in the United States, the majority of children in public schools under the age of eight are from racial ethnic backgrounds. The idea Dr. Malvo talked about replacement theory and you with your book in terms of, you know, white fear, because there's a thread connected to all of those. And what it correlates to is violence, particularly violence against black folks. So it's really important when we hear comments like that, that we're aware of it. As my colleague says, she's playing on loop. So the DNC, whoever she's running against, whatever Democrat should have that constantly on loop and should have an ads, you know, 10, 15, 20 second ads coming out consistently to hammer her along in terms of, you know, focusing exactly what she's saying. But I could tell you what, Roland, we're going to hear more comments like this over the next couple of months and a couple of years because, you know, the hood has come off for a lot of these people. She felt comfortable. She said what she wanted to say. She tried to backtrack. But as uh, Brother Dr. Carr likes to say, say it with your chest. <laughs> well, look, I, I, I have said point blank on the Congo that Donald Trump has unleashed this thing. And what used to be said undercover, frankly, these people don't care. They're like, yo, man, shh. <laughs> we can say it. We good. And mm -hmm. I think we saw no no greater example of, of that than, than Charlottesville years ago, right? When we saw all of those young guys out there and, and girls with those tiki torches and, and all of that, no hoods, no masks or anything like that. It was all out of the box. And of course, Trump says it's fine people on both sides. And what what have we really been... And like Dr. Malvo said, when we say we, we're not talking about we here, we're talking about as a society. You know, these people should have been shut down. They should have been shut down, kicked out of schools, lost jobs, and, and, and the list goes on and on. But every time the media decided that they wanted to say... Not They didn't want to call Donald Trump a liar. Every time they wanted to give these guys the benefit of the doubt, every time they wanted to give these guys an opportunity to come on their own networks and spread more of their nonsense on their shows in some vague, or some ridiculous attempt to show that we're, we are bipartisan and we believe in bringing in both sides and you're letting racists and anti-Semites and sexists be on your networks, 
every time they did that, they made this stuff a little bit more comfortable for the rest of us to, for the rest of America to be able to swallow. And this is where we are right now, where, our, where we're at our jobs right now, we're in our schools, and people feel comfortable that they can say anything. People feel comfortable just going up and hitting black women in stores like they don't care, because Donald Trump and all of these guys talked about violence. You got these Republicans out there doing these ads where they're going into people's houses with guns, wanting to kill their own, by the way. Rhinos, as they say, because and that should show if they don't care about themselves, they don't give a damn about us. But like Dr. Malvo said in our last segment, we allowed this to happen. And now more than ever is a time when we got to start shutting these things down. Dr. King said you can't legislate morality, but you can regulate behavior. We got to start taking action on these folks because it is going to get worse. We, we got the New York ruling that you talked about last week as well as it relates to the handguns and what the Supreme Court did. We got They also ruled on not having to read Miranda rights anymore. So the situation is going to get more violence, more ignorant, and, and, and it's, we are still the number one targets of hate crimes in this country and always have been. And so now is the time to really start calling out what they're saying. And if this this woman didn't believe what she said, what do her policies show? Who does she, what, what 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 does she support that shows that she doesn't believe that quote unquote white lives matter? Basically, at the end of the day. And so now we got to call them out and put them out and shut them down because our future, as it has always been, like you said, Roland, we've always been on the battlefield, and this is just the latest battle. Uh, indeed, indeed, uh, folks. Uh, Going to go to break. We uh, come back. Uh, more news, including uh, some shocking video released of the fatal shooting of a black man in Florida. Uh, man, uh, talk to you about that. Plus, y'all, did y'all know Florida also the new law? Cops can now ticket folk because they music too loud. <sighs> y'all know black people are going to be targeted for this one. You're watching Roland Martin Unfiltered on the Black Star Network. Don't forget to support us in what we do. Download the Black Star Network app available on all platforms. Apple phone, Android phone, Apple TV, Android TV, Roku, Amazon Fire TV, Xbox One, Samsung Smart TV. You can also join our Bring the Funk fan club. Every dollar you give goes to support the show and what we do. See and check our money order to P.O. Box 57196, Washington, D.C., 20037-0196. Cash app is dollar sign RM Unfiltered. PayPal is R Martin Unfiltered. Venmo is RM Unfiltered. Zelle is rolling at rollingsmartin.com. Rolling at rollingmartinunfiltered.com. We'll be right back. Verizon just gave us all a brand new iPhone 13. We've been customers for years. I thought new phones were for new customers. We got iPhone 13s too, switched to Verizon two minutes ago. Ours were busted, and we still got a shiny new one. Check it out. So wait, everybody gets the same great deal. I think that's the point. iPhone 13 on us for every customer. Current, new, everyone on any unlimited plan, starting at just $35. All on the network more people rely on. Love our new Alexa. It's a Buick. Yeah, Alexa. Buick. Alexa. It's a Buick. It's an Alexa. It's a Buick. It's an Alexa. Coach, that's a Buick. That's an Alexa. The Buick Enclave with available Alexa built in. On a next A Balanced Life with Dr. Jackie, we're talking all things mental health and how helping others can help you. We all have moments where we have struggles, and on this week's show, our guests demonstrate how helping others can also help you. Why you should never stop giving and serving others on a next A Balanced Life here on Black Star Network. How about sushi? I just had sushi for lunch yesterday. How about tacos? Automatic emergency braking, one of six advanced safety features standard on every 2022 Chevy Equinox. Find new technology, find new roads, Chevrolet. Next on The Black Table with me, Greg Carr. A very different take on Juneteenth with the one and only Dr. Sunyata Ahmed. We'll explore the amazing foods, remedies, and rituals that are a part of our history and the Juneteenth holiday. So it's our responsibility to return the healthier version to our folks instead of just the red liqueurs marketed to us, the red sodas and the other things. I mean, why does the Kool-Aid man have to sound like Louis Armstrong? He's like, oh yeah. Yeah, yeah. right. That's an enlightening and tasty hour of the Black Table, only on the Black Star Network. 
Hi, I'm Amber Stevens West from The Carmichael Show. Hi, my name is Latoya Luckett, and you're watching Roland Martin Unfiltered. All right, folks, uh, let's go to Florida, where body cam footage has been released uh, in a, a fatal shooting there. Uh, folks, it's, it seems like whenever we talk about these uh, stories, it's uh, always uh, Florida uh, that comes to mind. Um, they, it, again, a Florida officer has been charged with manslaughter for the killing of a black man. Former Titusville police officer Joshua Payne will be prosecuted for the death of James Lowry. Lowry was shot and killed after a foot pursuit on uh, the death of Christmas uh, this year. Payne was responding to a call about a woman being violently assaulted. He spotted Lowry, whose appearance fit the suspect's description. Lowry died from a gunshot wound to the head. Titusville Chief John Lau explains how the investigation concluded with charges against Officer Payne. Officer Josh Payne was found to have violated several department general orders to include unnecessary use of deadly force. So how did this happen? First, during the foot pursuit, Officer Payne deployed his department-issued taser five separate times and over 45 seconds in an attempt to stop Mr. Lowry from fleeing. Our training specifically details that if a technique does not give the desired result, then we must change our response to that resistance. Second, we believe that Officer Payne was alerted to Mr. Lowry first by reaching into his pocket and then by pulling an item out. Officer Payne's voice went up an octave stating, drop it, three separate times. Officer Payne then drew his firearm, holding it in his left hand while still holding and activating his taser with his right hand. Although Officer Payne's decision to draw his firearm based on Mr. Lowry's actions was sound, our training specifically addresses transitioning from one tool to another. At no time do we train our officers to operate both taser and a firearm at the same time. Payne is out on a bond and resigned from the police force the day that he uh, was he indicted. And just so you know, there's no photo of Payne anywhere on the Internet. Not even his mugshot has been made public. That's the thing that for me, Julian, it still bothers me. This, this again, this how these separate standards are for police. I'm sorry, you, you've been charged with the death of someone. This, this notion of the system still protecting an officer when any of our mugshots have been out immediately. If you were simply accused, Roland, not indicted, simply accused of something, there your picture would be. And so, though, they, they protect their own. And it really goes back to what we were talking about in the last segment. We talk about protecting white lives. They protect each other. There's going to be someone that he probably have an attorney who will make the case that he was afraid for his life, which we know. You shot somebody in the back. You're not afraid for your life. You know, you're afraid that their life will it convict you for your wrongful behavior. You saw her, the chief, he said, now, how do you use your taser five times in so many seconds? And then try to be Superman and carry two weapons at the same time. Well, you know that doesn't work. But they will protect this guy. He, he may have quit, et cetera. They will protect him as long as they can, and they'll make a case that police officers have the right, if you will, to, quote, defend themselves. Although there's no defending here at all. And if he knew who the man was, he'd have to shoot him. He just could have waited. Gone and got him later. But what was he? He, was, he resembled somebody. It wasn't even... He was not in... They said someone had, um, what was it, domestic abuse... But he was not the one who did the domestic abuse. So they don't take their time. They see a black man or woman, they see a black person, they figure, okay, let's shoot. It is open season on black people, plain and simple. And that case is disgusting. But I'm glad that his parents, they, they really were very persistent to making sure that the uh, video was shown. And, of course, our brother Ben Crump is on the case with this one as well. But, you know, the, the parents were determined to make sure that this video was shown. And we now all know what kind of a devil, I say devil, that pain is. Uh, Y'all want to talk about, uh, again, uh, cops uh, just losing their minds targeting us. Let's go to Rhode Island, where an off-duty Rhode Island police officer, uh, who was also a state Republican Senate candidate, is facing assault charges for punching a his black opponent 
at an abortion protest at the State House. Providence Patrolman Gene Lugo was charged with simple assault and disorderly conduct for an altercation with Democratic nominee Jennifer Rourke. Caught on video, Lugo punched Rourke during the protest Friday night. Folks, um, now, uh, before deactivating his Twitter account, Lugo tweeted he was dropping out of the race. He's been suspended from the Providence Police Department with pay. Larry, what the hell? Uh, so, listen, Roland, let's be clear. He's been suspended. He should be fired and shouldn't have access to his pension. We can't continuously allow individuals in law enforcement to behave like this at any point, whether he's at a protest, rally, campaign event, whatever it is. We can't constantly allow individuals to behave like this. He had an opportunity to leave. He assaulted. Once again, we talk about protecting black women. He assaulted a sister who was running against him, you know, interestingly enough. But he, 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 should, he, should, he should go to jail and he should lose his pension. We can't, like I said, we just can't allow to continue to allow this kind of violence. The other thing that worries me, Roland, is that we're going to continue to see this kind of violence at, 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 at pro people protesting a variety of the issues, particularly if they're from minoritized backgrounds and having to deal with individuals like, like you see, what you terms you, what you see in this video. I'm also glad they had it on video because you know the story would have been he felt like his life was in danger or she pushed him or tapped him or something else and he had to respond with violence. But we clearly have it on video. But oh even having it on I'm, video does, uh, doesn't mean he's going to get away. He's going to, he may still get away with I, it. I'm glad you raised that. Can y'all please get the Rudy Giuliani video? Oh my God, did y'all did y'all see this? Yes. So Rudy Giuliani is in a grocery store, and he comes out. He does these interviews, and it's like, oh my God, I was in a grocery store and I was assaulted. I almost <laughs> fell down and I could have I could have hit my head. And if 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 I wasn't in such good shape, this would have never happened. <laughs> Y'all, Rudy didn't realize the video was being recorded in the store. And the, and, and the assistant manager, uh, oh my God, y'all. This is, when you see the video, dude got tapped <laughs> on the back. Now, the grocery store worker has been, was arrested Sunday, has been charged, but Rudy Giuliani, made it seem like he was the victim of a vicious assault, that he took massive body blows as a result of this deal. <laughs> Y'all, he didn't. He is just a liar. A flat-out liar. Let me know y'all had a video. I mean, it's just, it's, it's, it's crazy. I mean, when... Uh, first of all, uh, 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 Julia, have you seen this video? I have not. It's it ain't even a love tap. <laughs> I mean, I mean, he came out and he came out. 
Oh my God. Come on. Did, did, did y'all found it yet? All right, come on. I mean, this, I, I, I got to play this for y'all because it is just, I mean, he, I mean, he was literally on television. Oh, my God. I, I could have been severely injured. Uh, and, and now he's complaining that Fox News won't cover the assault. Mm. Ooh. Oh, come on, y'all. Let's go. If you got the video, come on, let's go play it. Watch this, y'all. Did y'all miss that? Play it again. Julian, come on. Did you, you know, see that? this is so ridiculous. This is so oh, ridiculous. Oh, it's not. Oh, they oh, were oh, I'm just, I, 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 I got knocked down. I can't get up. Touches back. There was no velocity in that. But he talked about he would have fallen. He lost his balance. Well, if he lost his balance, it was because he was drinking the same thing he was drinking when he had that dive running down his face. <laughs> Uh, that's that's how he lost his balance because he surely didn't lose it from that. It did a pat on the back, really. But the man, number one, is a liar. Number two is a drama king. Number three likes to be in a paper, you know, with his you know what son. Uh, my mom TV side. I'm gonna say what I'm thinking, but his punk you know what son running for governor on a Republican ticket. This is just it's absurd that the, that that man has been arrested for touching him, simply touching him. It's, it's an absurdity. That's all I get. It's, it's just absurd. But, of course, now everybody's talking about it. Now he's in the news. That's where he likes to be, in the news, for for better or worse. I mean, he didn't mind being in the news with the hair dye rolling down his face. Uh, he, just like, he just likes people calling his name. It's absurd. Uh, uh, Larry, I don't know. I, I've, I've been so assaulted so badly. I just... I'm having back <laughs> spasms, um, and I just yes, I, I, that 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 vicious vicious attack on my back has resulted in these back spasms. Oh, st- Jesus! <laughs> Listen, Rudy Giuliani went from America's mayor <laughs> to you know uh, leading an insurrectionist to fake assaults <laughs> that were captured on video. I, listen, if you you had to show it multiple times because it was such a <laughs> light tap, it wouldn't have been appeared anything else. Maybe they thought he was choking or something. He was tapping him on his back. <laughs> he maybe <laughs> thought he was lunging forward with something in his throat, or you know, I'm not really sure how you're going to ch- charge with someone. If they can be charged with anything, I mean, literally, like I said, it's a pat on the back. So listen, Giuliani likes to be in the news, but what he needs to be is in jail. So I hope that happens sometime soon. But that little love tap he got, the person shouldn't be charged, and it's ridiculous. He should be embarrassed. But obviously, he was drinking election night, so he's certainly not going to be embarrassed now. <laughs> On the Congo, the cops and the prosecutor should say it. Man, go sit your punk ass down. We ain't wasting our time with this. Oh, most definitely. And it, it's very interesting when you see the video and you see his response and talking about assault... These Republicans, they are really good at flipping the script and taking the language that really affects real people in real time. For example, Stephen Colbert's film crew got arrested down at the Capitol last week when they were doing some work down there. And Tucker Carlson said that these guys are insurrectionists. And so what we see is that people like a Tucker Carlson, Giuliani can use this term assault, and the guys who only listen to them, who only follow them, and just like that situation with the first video you played at that rally, these guys put themselves in positions where they could be any some form of altercation and trouble, and then they blame other people when that altercation or trouble happens. But in the Giuliani case, there wasn't even that. But even with that, they seem, they seem necessary, they deem it necessary to be able to take the most 
extreme language, assault. There are real people being assaulted. The video you showed of the brother who got killed, whose family took six months to get the video out there with the help of Ben Crump, that man was assaulted and killed. When we see what happened with that sister, she was assaulted. But when they take it and use terms like that in these trivial examples, it trivializes real assault for the rest of, for the rest of their followers. And so I'm glad that we're calling them out, really, at the end of the day, because they're going to keep doing that. You saw what happened with, um, who was it, last week, who got uh, his house searched, right? And he was like, oh, my gosh, it's not the America that I know. I felt violated. And this is this is what they do. And we got to call them out on their BS in these situations. Grow up, Giuliani, man. Come on. You got to... Come on, man. For real. <laughs> I'm sorry. Sorry, not sorry. Uh, yeah. Uh, that, what, what, yeah, what a wimp. What a wimp. <laughs> All right, yeah, I got to go to break. We come back. We'll talk about uh, our black and missing for the day. Uh, and more news. You're watching Roland Martin Unfiltered, broadcasting live from New Orleans, uh, where Essence Festival begins this week, right here on the Black Star Network. iPhone 13 on us for every customer, current, new, everyone, to show the love. How about sushi? I just had sushi for lunch yesterday. How about tacos? Automatic emergency braking, one of six advanced safety features standard on every 2022 Chevy Equinox. Find new technology, find new roads, Chevrolet. Of course I looked up to Spike Lee. Of course, who didn't? I mean, he's a, he's a, he's a genius. But then also, I was this, this, this kid from Brooklyn right. that felt like, you know, Give me my damn respect. I, you know, I, I, I made this, you know, this creative art, right, that people are responding to. And it would have been great if we had the opportunity to sit one-on-one. -on -one. Hold on a second. Okay. Spike. What's up, baby? So I'm in L.A. right now. I got a one-on-one -on -one series with my network, Black Star Network. And I'm interviewing Maddie Rich. I appreciate that, bro. That, that was... That's a big moment, man. That was like, uh, man, that was good. Got me all choked up. That's good. Well, I'm all about connecting. Appreciate that. Love our new Alexa. It's a Buick. Yeah. Alexa. Buick. Alexa. It's a Buick. It's an Alexa. It's a Buick. It's an Alexa. Coach, that's a Buick. That's an Alexa. The Buick Enclave with available Alexa built in. I'm Deborah Owens, America's Wealth Coach. And on the next Get Wealthy, what do the ultra wealthy know that most of us don't? Well, the truth is that there is financial exclusion. And unfortunately, Far too many black folks haven't had access to this knowledge. And that's exactly what we're going to talk about on our next Get Wealthy with Melinda Hightower, a banker who's doing something to share exactly what you need to do to make it into the high net worth status. They weren't just saving just to save. They were saving for a purpose. That's right here on Get Wealthy with me, America's Wealth Coach, only on Black Star Network. Hi, everybody. This is Jonathan Nelson. Hi, this is Cheryl Lee Ralph, and you are watching Roland Martin Unfiltered. <laughs> All right, folks, uh, Sunja Atkins was last seen in Akron, Ohio, on June 13th. The 16-year-old is 5 feet 6 inches tall, weighs 215 pounds, with brown hair and brown eyes. Anyone with information about Sunja Atkins should call the Akron, Ohio Police Department at 330-375-2552, 330-375-2552. All right, folks, there's going to be a surprise a hearing tomorrow for the January 6th committee. They were not supposed to have any more hearings until July, but new evidence came up, calls for them to call witnesses tomorrow. Uh, a lot of speculation out there, exactly who it is. Uh, this right here says a whole lot on Macongo with what's going on. The fact that this committee... 
uh, again, that uh, Chairman Benny Thompson said last week that they, they were just going to take the time off, uh, continue their investigation. Uh, but literally, he said new evidence is coming up every single day. And this was such significant evidence, it caused them to decide to actually have a hearing uh, tomorrow. Uh, this sounds like a pretty big deal. Oh, absolutely. And I think the reason why they're doing this, oh, just in case y'all didn't know, um, I, I'm, I'm the actual guy they're bringing forward tomorrow. I got, I got, I got the information, man. Uh, but seriously, when you see these Republicans go before these hearings, they're always performing to an audience of one, and that's Trump. This committee, I believe they're performing for an audience of one as well, and it's Merrick Garland. You saw what happened today with them seizing um, John Eastman's phone as he's coming out of a restaurant. And, you know, they obviously felt whatever he had on his phone when you have all of these different types of apps like Signal that are really, you know, encrypted, that they needed to get it right away. That's why I believe that they are having this hearing tomorrow to show what, whatever new information that they, they have. I mean, they got that documentary film evidence last week as well. And I think that really at the end of the day, I, I do feel like Mayor Garland and the Justice Department are not acting fast enough but I do believe that they have been paying real attention to this stuff, and they haven't gotten all of the transcripts yet from the committee hearings. But when they see some of these things, I think it really encourages them to go farther and faster with the work that they're doing. So I believe that the reason this is happening tomorrow, because look at all of the stuff that's going on right now. We're rolling the news 24-7 and what the Supreme Court did. They could have waited on this, right, for some of this other stuff to die down. But they clearly feel like this is important enough because between now and the next hearing that they do in July, they want the Justice Department to get to work even faster on what they should already be doing. That's why I think they're doing this tomorrow. Larry, the uh, the lies are catching up the folks. Senator Ron Johnson, oh, I don't. Uh, there's a package that came to us. I I, I wasn't sure. Mm -hmm. Then later he had to admit that he was in cahoots uh, with someone else uh, regarding uh, those uh, different lists of electors. And then you have Congressman Mo, Bro Mo Brooks. Okay, well he just lost his bid for the uh, the nomination for the Republican for the United States Senate, and so doesn't have his House seat. He's like, damn that. Uh, he's been out there. Yeah, I talked to Trump directly about getting me a pardon. He might be a surprise guest as well. Uh, and so the walls are crashing down uh, uh, so slowly, but so slightly, but consistently. Yeah, so we need, uh, you know, it looks, sounds like the January 6th committee is continuing to squeeze, and hopefully DOJ is, because what happened is you'll have folks starting to drop down. <laughs> so <laughs> it, it, it'll be really... Uh, It'll be really interesting to hear what they have what's, in terms of who they have testifying tomorrow. And listen, Roland, as a former congressional staffer, I can tell you members don't like to meet just before holidays. So <laughs> they're really yeah. going to have – it's going to be a high standard tomorrow in terms of whatever evidence, whoever they have testifying tomorrow is be very interesting. And so time is shortly running out because obviously, you know, oh, you know, over the next couple of months, things could dramatically change. So it'll be really interesting, like I said, you know, I have faith in Chairman Thompson. It'll be interesting to hear what, whatever witnesses they have and, and, and what specifically new evidence they're, they're going to have to unveil. But once again, I'm going to make the point that DOJ is, is you know, I've seen we talked about Eastman losing it and taking his phone away, et cetera. But they need to continue to squeeze these folks because they don't. They will continue this, this, this un-American, un so, so to speak, behavior. And the United States is going to find themselves in, more, in far more difficult situations over the next couple of years. Um, you know, uh, again, as we sit here uh, and, and, and look at this thing, uh, 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 Julian, um, I, I do believe um, this notion of an audience of one uh, is correct. And I, I love to see these conservatives who say, oh, you know, people, people tune these things out. They come out the inflation, they come out jazz prices, stuff along those lines. I'm going to tell you who's paying attention. All of them folks who might be going to prison. There you go. <laughs> And they need to be sure. going to prison. When we listened last week to the guys from Justice talked about uh, all those, there was that big fool who said, yes, Trump was wrong, but he'd vote for him again. What? But in any case, when you listen to the folks from the Department of Justice, what you really saw is this was like a conspiracy, a conspiracy to take, um, really, to take over. It, it was, they used the word insurrection, they used the word, that, that's what it was. It was a riot. It was a white folks riot. That's exactly what it was. I hope that I, I'm sure that I'm wrong, but I, when they said they had a surprise witness, or I was hoping maybe they got Mike Pence. I mean, that's who we need to hear from. How how can this man, you know, keep his mouth shut when they were going to hang him and they were not playing? 
they had constructed gallows to hang him. And so, but he doesn't have anything to say. So I'm hoping that there are those, but you know what, Benny Thompson, first of all, before I say anything else, Benny Thompson deserves high props, high props mm -hmm. for what he's doing and the way he's doing it and the dignity with which he's comporting this, as does Liz Cheney. Um, and I'm not a fan of hers. I'm not a fan of her parents either, either one of them. But she has done a really great job uh, in her role. Um, and so when you look at this, all you, what you have to say is we've got another day of, of uh, hearings. I hope that they're productive. Uh, there you go. Look at the gals. I mean, seriously. Wow. And Pence won't say anything? I mean, you know. But, they, but anyway, back back these hearings tomorrow, I mean, many of us will have our eyes glued to the television. People are paying attention, whether they whether they think so or not. Now, what they're going to do about it, you know, like the fool who said he'd vote for him again, who knows? But people are paying attention because this was just an unprecedented attack on on basically the foundation of this nation. Uh, indeed. Folks, hold tight one second. Got to go to a break. We come back. But live when right here on Monday. You're watching Roland Martin Unfiltered on the Black Star Network. Love our new Alexa. It's a Buick. Yeah, Alexa. Buick. Alexa. It's a Buick. It's an Alexa. It's a Buick. It's an Alexa. Coach, that's a Buick. That's an Alexa. The Buick Enclave with available Alexa built in. We're all impacted by the culture, whether we know it or not. From politics to music and entertainment, it's a huge part of our lives. And we're going to talk about it every day right here on The Culture with me, Faraji Muhammad, only on the Black Star Network. How about sushi? I just had sushi for lunch yesterday. How about tacos? Automatic emergency braking, one of six advanced safety features standard on every 2022 Chevy Equinox. Find new technology, find new roads, Chevrolet. On a next A Balanced Life with Dr. Jackie, we're talking all things mental health and how helping others can help you. We all have moments where we have struggles and on this week's show, our guests demonstrate how helping others can also help you. Why you should never stop giving and serving others on a next A Balanced Life here on Black Star Network. Me to do something crazy, but I don't know what to do. I'd rather just sit here. Hi, this is Cheryl Lee Ralph, and you are watching Roland Martin Unfiltered. I mean, could it be any other way? Really? It's Roland Martin. All right, how do you go from being a biomedical engineer to being a urban farmer? Well, my next guest uh, knows a lot about that. Uh, farmer Chippy, creator of Agra Hood and Plantation Park Heights Urban Farm, joins us from Baltimore. Glad to have you on the show. So, Farmer Chippy, really? Yeah, really. <laughs> yeah. So now That's I your mean... real name? That's what you changed your name to? No, I mean, the children call me that, and that's what my dad called me when I was born, so I'm that guy. <laughs> so, um, so, so again, how do you go from being a biomedical field service engineer to urban farmer? So, in the past, I worked for a few uh, corporations in the United States, and they had preventive maintenance for instruments, but they never had preventive maintenance for humans. It was strange. But anyway, I try to find it, and it, it's urban agriculture. That's what it is right now. So we decided that we're going to grow food locally and make sure that our communities are all right. That's where we are. And, and this thing is real. Because, this thing is real. Uh, uh, a sister I know in Atlanta, Rachel Ponder, uh, actually went back and got her certification, her degree in in in, in agriculture. I, I was in Atlanta last week, uh, and uh, she was talking about uh, as a product that she had. 
I said, I said, girl, you still, I said, you still farming in your pumps, uh, just messing with her. Uh, but, but we have seen how this has grown tremendously over the last decade when it came to food deserts and people understanding the importance of being able to have, uh, being able to grow uh, fresh produce and products uh, in urban areas uh, and in ways that don't require massive amounts of land. So, yeah, and, and two, let me add a little value to that by, by, by reminding you that we're growing on vacant lots, lots that were basically abandoned by the city. Our team managed to recruit young children from the neighborhood to help us set the seeds. Then the elementary and middle school children transplanted the seeds and the, con the college children managed to sell the product at the farmer's market. At, at this time, we have three farmer's market, and this is a good time to announce the Druid Hill Farmer's Market in Baltimore is going to be opened on Wednesday of this week, the 29th. So we have markets where these children learn the art of trading and selling the products that they have grown. This is amazing situation. So we just want to remind you that wow. it's vacant lots that we are on. Wow, that is awesome. Uh, let's go to my panel uh, for questions. Let's see here. Uh, I'll start with, let me see, who probably has the greenest thumb out of my panel? Uh, I probably <laughs> would say, I'll try Larry. Larry? <laughs> Yeah, so, uh, Roland, thanks for having our guest. So I lived in Baltimore, and so this is uh, really important. I know about familiar with all your work. I'm glad to hear you're having something in Drew Hill Park. So can you talk a little bit about, you talked about elementary and middle school students and also uh, college students. I'm thinking about Morgan State, Coppin State, certainly West Baltimore, Coppin State University students. Can you talk about some of the other re the response support you've gotten from um, the mayor on this, on, in terms of what you're doing with urban farming? What kind of support have you received from the city? Uh, uh, not much, but, <laughs> but I did receive a lot of support from Coppin State and uh, my Senator Haynes. I got to tell you, Senator Haynes of the 40th, I'm in the 40th. So Senator Haynes was really instrumental in making sure things happened the way they happened. And for the first time in Baltimore's history, 10 of our children, I mean, eight or 10 are uh, at the Ag Discovery Program, which is actually a USDA-sponsored program for middle and high school children. This is the first time ever. So now they visited us today, and today was a magical day for us. Today was the day when we got to talk about the agriculture, the urban ag, and introduce it to other people from other states. So these other children came from other states, New Jersey, Washington, D.C., and they came to Baltimore to experience this through Coppin. So this was a magical day for us. I'm so happy that I could share this with you on the Roland Martin Show. <laughs> All right, then. Let's go to uh, Julian. Julian? Well, first of all, brother, thank you for your work. Uh, thank you for the imagination it takes to basically, um, you know, grow crops. I was at the farmer's market in my neighborhood, downtown L.A., yesterday. ran into a brother who's doing some of the same stuff. He and his, his siblings are doing microgreens. Um, they're growing them. But, what, but L.A., the, there's not a lot of vacant land here in L.A. Where, if, the, if you don't have the vacant land, I mean, I know folks who grow stuff on their roofs and stuff like that. But if you don't have the vacant land, how can people join this movement, which is such an important movement, to make sure that you're growing fresh fruits and vegetables? And while, while I'm... Sitting here, I have to shout out my sister Marianne, who has grown artichokes, sweet potatoes, uh, chocolate mint, all this stuff in my mom's yard. It's really funny. She she has really just grown some stuff. She doesn't have to go to the grocery store anymore. But tell me what you do if you don't have the land. So we encourage... Uh, that's a good question, too, because most of the people... I mean, we're in Baltimore, so people are renters or... They have like a little condo or with a, a balcony or veranda. So we encourage bucket farmers, right? You can grow food in buckets or you can share plots. Baltimore is a thriving community of urban agriculture. So we have the opportunity now 
to rent lots or lease lots, small little plots where you can grow your food. You can ask the farmer to grow your food and we have irrigation systems that's gonna make sure that it's watered on time, it gets enough sun, and then you get the produce you want, you get to harvest. That's a way to onboard people. But they're the bucket farmers, those old people, the ancient farmers like myself, who have learned since we were little. This is our opportunity to encourage other people to get involved through bucket farming. If you can get a four by four or a two by two area, we can put a Home Depot bucket there with different brassicas in it. And these brassicas are gonna be cancer fighters and they can help you add value to your liberty. All right, I'm a Congo. Yes, thank you so much for what you're doing. I, I want to return to the point you made about all of the kids that you have involved in your program. You know, growing up in the hood, you know, our schools, we get the cheapest foods. And one of the arguments that I always given, well, these kids don't like vegetables. They just don't eat them and so on and so forth. And can you just talk about the reaction that you're getting from these young kids as they're involved in this type of project that so many people think that our kids are not interested in? That is a wonderful, wonderful question. Here why. Because uh, when I got here for the first time in 2014, I, it was hard to attract the children, right? They wasn't mm -hmm. paying attention okay. to me. But this. they always wanted 50 cents to go to the corner store. I always had that 50 cents, right? So then they were like, what are you eating? And I was like, well, I just made a soup. And they were like, what is it? I put them in small portions. Fast forward to now. If I don't make this soup, I'm in trouble. <laughs> <You know? laughs> They're like, hey, 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 what's going on? What's happening with the soup today? So mm. I can tell you for sure, I have kids that did not know about agriculture, did not know about peppers, and they can list 10 peppers right now. I have mm. young people who have left their day job to do this. And it's all volunteer work. None of it is paid. I don't have the capacity to pay anyone yet. Wow. You know, maybe after this interview, I will. <laughs> 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 but uh, for real, for real, it is a movement that has been inspired by hard work, dedication, love, loyalty, and respect. I can just sum it up, summarize it to that. Because no one gets paid. Everyone comes here at the end of the day. We get to share in brethren and sistering camaraderie. And we can tell our post-COVID story or a still-COVID story, and we don't have to worry about being uncomfortable. You know, so that's the kind of vibe that we created. We're still growing food. We're selling at three farmers markets, and we're inviting more children to come because now the summer has started. So that's where we are, you know. We don't have the solution, but I think this is a good start, you know. There's a lot of folks here who well, want I, I, actually, I, I, actually, I'll disagree with that. I disagree with that, Farmer Chippy. This is a solution. It is a solution. There's no such thing as the solution. It is a solution. And I think that what this does is, you, you, look, 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 they're growing food. Uh, it's, it's, it's reducing cost. Second of all, it's an entrepreneurial um, uh, opportunity. It's a skill set opportunity. And what you're doing is also, frankly, beautifying the city by taking advantage of vacant lots. So, you know, y'all are doing five things at one time. My man, my man, you know, it's hard to get people in the city to appreciate that. And we've been working at it. You know, even leadership, it's been challenging. But I think they're coming around to it. I'm praying for the best. Let's 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 put it that way. But what I do know is that I'm not sure about the past. I don't like it at all. Currently, I'm confused. Right. But the future is bright because I have like 10 children in the Ag Discovery Program. I have 15 to 25 children coming from Youth Works, all of them around agriculture. So I want to do this interview again in September, November. I think I'll have a better story for you. <laughs> no, no. So actually, so, so, so why don't we do it this way, which I think, which, which, would, be, which would be very interesting, and that is this here. So... Uh, you, when you said the farmer's market, we said, when is that going to be open? What day is that? It's, it's Wednesday of this week for the first shop, but the grand opening is next Wednesday. Not the Wednesday of this week, the next okay. Wednesday. 
All right, so 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 let's do this here. So uh, let's 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 look at a Wednesday uh, in August or September, and then what we'll do is uh, we'll actually come do the show from there, and then that way we can invite people out. We can have people come out and meet and greet, uh, and then uh, and so uh, and so we'll actually do the show on location from uh, from uh, one of the spots there. Uh, and get yeah. people uh, re- really interested uh, and better tell the story. I love it. I love it. You're a genius. That's why you are the uh, man. All right. <laughs> people are asking if they want to support. Um, uh, is there a website where they can where they can give or donate? Where can they go? Yeah, plantationparkheights.org. O R G. Plantation Park Heights. PlantationParkHeights.org. Yes. And you can go to the donation okay. button. Give if you can. That would be wonderful. It will keep us steady to do our work. We have a lot going on. We have Youth Works children coming on board. 5th of, 5th of July, we have the Youth Works team coming on board. We have also a collaboration with cool. Civic Works in Baltimore. So... We have some children coming up, 75 of them, and we got to make it happen. Let's make it happen. All right. Farmer Chippy, we appreciate appreciate it, and uh, we'll be seeing you soon uh, out there on one of those lots. Thank you. Thank you for the opportunity to present. See y'all at the market. Yes, sir. Appreciate it. Thank you so very much. All right, then. We'll do that. All right, Julian. Uh, Larry, as well as Oma Congo, I certainly appreciate y'all joining us today uh, on the show. Uh, we are here in New Orleans. There's going to be a lot of things going on this week. Uh, they're already they're already getting uh, the staging set in the convention center. We were there earlier. We're going to be there tomorrow looking at where we're going to be setting up. A lot of different things that we're going to be doing, so looking forward. Uh, we're going to be providing wall-to-wall coverage uh, of Essence Festival, partnering with the folks at Coca-Cola. Uh, things happening in the convention center, outside, at the Superdome, all around the city. And so we're really looking forward uh, to this week to doing some great work. And so, uh, folks, y'all definitely don't want to miss that. Uh, and speaking of that, here's our Essence his throwback. last night diddy got the bet lifetime achievement award at the bet awards Uh, and so we look forward to uh lots of great performances taking place this week here in new orleans again to our panel thank you so very much Uh, i appreciate it folks all of you don't forget to support us in what we do please download the black star network app we need to get to fifty thousand downloads y'all let's make it happen download the apple phone android phone apple tv android tv roku amazon fire tv xbox one samsung smart tv you can also support us in what we do by joining our bring the funk fan club where every dollar you give goes to support the show uh all checks and money orders to p.o box 57196 washington dc 20037 
Cash 0196. Cash app is dollar sign RM Unfiltered. PayPal is R Martin Unfiltered. Venmo is RM Unfiltered. Zelle is rolling at rollingsmartin.com. Rolling at rollingmartinunfiltered.com. Uh, YouTube, what's going on with y'all? 899 likes. Really, we should easily be at 1,000. I don't understand what the whole problem is, okay? Uh, so y'all got 60 seconds to get 101 likes. Look, it's almost 2,000 of y'all watching right now, so... I don't understand what the hole up is, okay? So y'all need to get on it, all right? So let's go. Uh, hit that doggone like button so we can go ahead uh, and uh, get uh, that uh, information. I'm going to read this real quick for, uh, real quick, quick for you, uh, folks. Um, a Connecticut woman can move forward with her lawsuit against Harvard University by using photos of her enslaved ancestors. The Massachusetts Supreme Court ruled in favor of Tamara Lanier, allowing her to sue Harvard for emotional distress after circulating photos of an enslaved South Carolina man and his daughter, which was taken in 18. 50 by a Harvard biologist to support slavery. Lanier claims the university failed to reach out to her after the photos were used for a conference. One of her attorneys, Ben Crump, uh, said uh, that, uh, again, the images of the slave ancestors and that she would be on the right side of history when this case is finally settled. It is past time for Harvard to atone for its past ties to slavery and white supremacy research and stop profiting from slave images. L Lanier has been fighting this case for the last three years. And uh, also, uh, real quick, Brittany Griner is going to be having her trial uh, in Russia. Uh, it has been set for July 1st. She's been in custody since February. Uh, and the U.S. State Department says she's been wrongfully detained, of course. And the U.S. Special Presidential Envoy for Hostage Affairs is managing Griner's case. She's accused of smuggling narcotics into Russia, which is punishable by up to 10 years in prison. All right, so uh, let's see where we are with the likes, okay? Because, uh, look, I told y'all I shouldn't have to be big and y'all ask y'all to hit the like button. And there we go. We had 1,000 likes. So, fine. I'll release y'all. All right, that's it, y'all. I appreciate it. We're going to be here in New Orleans, like I say, all week. I look forward to broadcasting uh, some good stuff for you guys tomorrow. Y'all take care. I'll see you then. Holla!